Tesla, unlike Edison and Marconi, is a bachelor. He prefers to be wedded to science. It seemed all the more important to discover his attitude on sex, the most electrifying factor in the lives of most men. Tesla did not evade the question. I recognize the importance that sex plays in the life of man. Nature has made its attraction irresistible to ensure the perpetuity of the race. As for myself, I have found that the thinker is confronted with the problem of perpetuating either the species or the mind. It is almost impossible, at least in certain realms of high endeavor, to do both. This has been recognized by the Hindus, whose adepts practice complete sexual abstinence, and by many of the great religions. Before I produced a rotating magnetic field, I concentrated all my powers upon my experiment. The strain would have killed a hundred oxen. I certainly could not have survived it if I had permitted my energies to be diverted into the channels of sex. He a man who has made a name for himself deliberately chooses to remain a bachelor the world is naturally curious to know what the reasons were that impelled him to this choice. Marriage has come to be considered the natural thing for every normal man, and when some preeminent man shows a firm determination to sidestep it everybody wonders whether his superior intelligence has revealed to him some fatal defects in the institution of matrimony which are not apparent to the average person. But the public's curiosity in this respect is seldom gratified. Most of the distinguished bachelors try to pass off their bachelorhood as a joke, saying that it is not a matter of choice, but because they have never been able to find a woman who would marry them. As a rule, they are singularly averse to giving any serious reasons for their failure to become husbands. Nikola Tesla, the great scientist and inventor, is a striking exception to this rule. In a recent interview with a representative of this newspaper he frankly explains why he has never married and why he probably never will marry. And in connection with his explanation he presents some ideas about woman's freedom and what he thinks it is sure to lead to that will be read with interest by those who agree with him as well as by the many who will not. In the past the reason why Mr. Tesla never married was because his estimation of woman placed her on such a lofty pedestal that he could never bring himself to feel worthy of her. Now that she has, as he feels, stepped down from her pedestal and bartered all her noblest qualities for what is called her freedom, he is even more disinclined to matrimony than he was before. Although of course Mr. Tesla is too gallant a gentleman to say it in so many words, his comments let it be inferred that he thinks the new woman almost as far beneath him as the one of other days was above him. According to his views, the sex has rushed from one extreme to another of quite a different kind, and in the plunge it is left for Mr. Tesla and other bachelors who think as he does no happy medium such as Josiah Allen's wife used to declare one of the essentials to happiness. I had always thought of woman, says Mr. Tesla, as possessing those delicate qualities of mind and soul that made her in these respects far superior to man. I had put her on a lofty pedestal, figuratively speaking, and ranked her in certain important attributes considerably higher than man. I worshipped at the feet of the creature I had raised to this height, and, like every true worshipper, I felt myself unworthy of the object of my worship. But all this was in the past. Now the soft-voiced gentlewoman of my reverend worship has all but vanished. In her place has come the woman who thinks that her chief success in life lies in making herself as much as possible like man, in dress, voice and actions, in sports and achievements of every kind. In those words the great electrical genius sums up the reasons for his bachelorhood. Some who read them will urge that his view of womankind is distorted by the years he has spent in the laboratory, dealing with inanimate things and developing perhaps an abnormal shyness which acts as an insuperable barrier to marriage. Others will say that the very fact of his detachment from the ordinary routine of life makes him all the better qualified to point out its defects and to criticize the change for the worse which he believes new conditions have brought to womankind.